hello out there. This evening in the shop, I wanted to show you a new tool that came in. So the workbench is just about as crowded as always, but we'll make do. This tool is called the Chesterton Gauge Glass Cutter. Open up the box and here's this fancy little affair. So the term gauge glass comes from uh, the old days where instead of a, a dial gauge or, or a, a digital readout we might be used to these days, you had a physical observation port in the form of a glass tube that was connected to your reservoir. So this could be used on a steam boiler, could be used on a water tank. This specific one probably came from a, a residential water tank. It doesn't have any shutoff valves. Normally they have a shutoff in the case of a broken glass. You don't want pressurized liquid going all over the place. Uh, they did have a little bit of protection in the form of these brass rods. Uh, the rod is supposed to start at the top and continue through these little retainers in the bottom. The, the gauge glass is a bit too long in this case, but say Jimmy was getting a bit excited and he was swinging a screwdriver around and he just about clipped it while it would hit the brass rod before it hit the glass so it wouldn't shatter. So uh, the job that I have for this thing is to cut small sections of glass for drip oilers. This is an example of one that I've tried it out on. This is the drip oiler off the seven and a half horsepower Fairbanks Morse gas engine from uh, previous videos. Uh, this upper part was fine and complete, but the little glass in the, uh, the dripping kind of inspection port, if you will, was gone. And you'll often find that those are either broken or gone. Uh, today, I have a great big oiler that is also missing one, and I thought it would be fun to, uh, to make it for. So not sure what this came off of it uh, when I got this big oiler I had a bracket here so it kind of makes me think of an oiler that would be set somewhere and um, just based on size this might have had a little fixture with a wick and it could have had a crank coming up and uh, kind of licking that wick to uh, put the oil on on a crankshaft for example I really don't know all it's marked with is Michigan Lubricated Company Detroit and then a, uh, a number, but it, it's a big old fella. It's probably five inch diameter and six inch tall. So let's make a little glass for it here. So here's the layout. Here's what we have to work with. This is a section of gauge glass. I got really lucky last year and found a um, on the local Facebook marketplace, a big box of a whole bunch of different gauge glasses. These would have been sold as kind of thick wall glass tubes and you'd cut them to length as needed. This tool lets you cut, well, about six inches um, based on the stop. So you have a hardened wheel in here, a little wheel that spins. This is just um, a rest, I suppose you could call it. And this is your your backstop that sets the distance, uh, the depth of the tube. So if I go to the toolbox, got my dial caliper, I'll use the depth gauge side to measure from the start of the threads in here to the bottom. And also keep in mind that there should be a leather seal on the top and bottom, so those will add a little bit of thickness. So if I put this in here, run it down, right about here. 825, okay, okay, 825, and I know this glass is outer diameter about three quarter inches, and it fits in here, not tightly, but uh, with minimal slop, so that'll be taken up by the uh, compressible leather gaskets that are on the top and the bottom. Uh, in this case, I suppose this is just a standard drip oiler, so it doesn't need a tight seal, Whereas an engine cylinder oiler like this one, uh, it needs a tight seal. So these ones have, if you look inside this little system here, there's a check ball. So if there's a bit of blow by of the engine from the cylinder and it blows by, it won't spit the oil out the top. That check ball will uh, lock it. Sometimes you see these oilers also with small pipes to the side and that... Uh, that's for the blow by the pressure to go through the oil and uh, out on the top instead of on the bottom of the oil and splash it everywhere. So that's a way to tell a cylinder oiler from a standard drip oiler. Anyway, we have the length that we need. 
So I'll take this and set the distance from the little wheel, the little cutting wheel to the back stop. So I'll just push this down a bit right there and lock that screw, set screw. That's good. This is very simple. Um, this is shaped in this manner so that you can use your thumb and your middle finger, uh, your pointer finger at the same time to apply pressure for the cutter on the inside of the tube. So uh, which side is fresh? This side's fresh. So all I'm going to do, well, I'm going to put on one glove first. Just in case there's little shards that decide to go about. Slide this up. And make sure I have the nice smooth side from the last cut. Put it against the back stop. And use my thumb and finger. Now, the, the important thing here, and if we look on the original box it, the layout is shown it says do not run the cutting wheel a second time in the groove it dulls the cutter so it can dull the cutter and it can also make a bit of a frigged up trail and you probably won't get a clean break so the name of the game is to run the cutter around until you're almost at where you started you don't want to go over where you started so bring this up and go. That's about where it should be. And if you look, you can see the glass actually has some depth. The cut has some depth. It hasn't really cut. It's just caused a fracture on the inside. So if everything goes to plan, I should be able to break this kind of downward and pull at the same time and it should pop off. There we go. Simple as. I have a little high spot here. Mm. Wasn't the smoothest, but it'll definitely do. I'll uh, break that off. I'm going to get a little bit of sandpaper. That'll do. There's our little piece of glass. Drop this in here. Tighten it back on. Now I will cut a seal for this. And we have less than a sixteenth of play, so that's just about perfect. There we go. So I hope you've enjoyed this example of gauge glass cutting, and uh, see you next time for more repair and construction and tinkering with all the old good stuff. Till then, have a good one.